Much like action movies or action heroes, when it comes to the guitar, action is a word used to describe something about the guitar. Unlike action movies or action heroes, guitar action is not all that exciting or all that interesting, but it does matter, and that's why I've taken time today out of my busy coffee drinking schedule to talk to you a little bit about guitar action. So action is a term that's used for almost all stringed instruments, but for most stringed instruments, action is kind of a vague term uh, that describes in general how the instrument plays. Uh, with guitar, it's a lot more specific. Uh, with guitar, action really is talking about the height of the strings above your frets. This is why you'll hear people talk about having low action or having high action. All that really refers to is having your string height, you know, pretty high up above the frets for high action, or pretty low down right near the frets for lower action. Now, if you haven't been playing for too long, this might be one of those things that you look at and you're like, why in heck should I care? But you really should, because action is one of the biggest things that impacts how a guitar plays, and how a guitar plays is something that really dictates what you can do on it, and what style of play you're going to be able to find to be kind of easy on that guitar, or really, really hard on that guitar. Certain styles or genres require certain action in order to sound uh, just right. You know, slap bass really needs action in a certain place where you can get that rebound off of the fret the way that you want it. And things like jazz kind of require a certain form of action as well that enables you to have those nice crystal clear ringing out chords. Now when we talk about action on a guitar, like I said, we're talking about that string height which we can measure. Uh, depending on the source that you go to, you might hear this being measured at the 8th fret or the 12th fret. We generally go with the 12th fret here at Stringjoy, but again, it doesn't really matter all that much as long as you're kind of consistent and you know which fret you're talking about and what your measurement should be. So before we get into what those measurements ought to look like on your particular guitar, let's talk a little bit about the different types of, you know, higher or lower action and what the advantages and disadvantages are of each. The biggest disadvantage with higher action is that the guitar gets a lot harder to play. You have to press the string all the way down, you know, so that it's interacting with the fret, and however high that string is is how far you have to press it down. When you factor in the strings have tension to them as well, the further you're pressing down, the more tension you're having to deal with every time you fret a note, and that generally makes it a little bit harder to play. On the other side, when you have higher action, you tend to have these nice sort of ringing out chords. Um, you have much more clearer notes. You don't have any interaction with other frets on the guitar other than the one that you're playing with. So you tend to have a little bit more of a cleaner sound. A lot of studio bassists use really, really high action, especially like when you get back to like James Jamerson and the older bassists. Um, and this makes it so that, you know, when they hit a note, you're only hearing that note and it's crystal clear, really rings out and is super, super present, even though it's a little bit harder to play. Now conversely, with lower action, the advantage is that the guitar is a lot easier to play. You don't have to push down nearly as far or nearly as hard in order to fret a note. And this is why a lot of shredders and really speedy guitar players love to have really, really low action. On the other side though, it does have some tonal effects. The lower your action, the more likely you are to have that string interacting with other frets, which we would call fret buzz, but even if the fret isn't necessarily, you know, if the string isn't buzzing against the fret, you can still get a little bit of a deadening of your sustain from smaller interactions that you can't hear as, you know, really dreaded fret buzz, um, but it's still kind of causing the string to not resonate the way that it should. So that is always the trade-off with lower action. At the same time, a lot of players that like really, really low action for this reason tend to play with a lot of drive or distortion, and that kind of covers up for that because you're adding a little bit more sustain through the distortion circuit, and that tends to make it a little bit less obvious. And this is also the reason why a lot more clean players tend to have to play with higher action. So, you know, you can kind of use the drive or the lack thereof as a little bit of a substitute for adjusting um, where your action could or should be. So what should your action be? Well, it's a really, really broad range and, you know, a different sort of spec might make sense for a different player, but we do have some general common rules of thumb that we kind of stick to here at Stringjoy that I think might be helpful for you out there. For electric guitars, if we're measuring at the 12th fret, we generally recommend keeping your action between 4 64ths or 6 64ths. Obviously, you could convert that down to 2 30 seconds or 3 30 seconds, but a lot of times people just measure it in 64ths uh, in our you know, American system because that's just, I guess, easier to keep it kind of standardized. That tends to be the general range. If you want to be up a little bit higher, something like 6 might make more sense. The 4 might make more sense if you want a little bit lower. And of course, you can go outside of that range depending on the instrument, the string gauge, and all that sort of stuff if it's going to make you play the way that you want to. Now for acoustic guitars, we generally recommend going between 5 64ths and 7 64ths. So you'll notice that that's a little bit higher than the electric. Now you might be wondering why acoustic guitars generally have a little bit higher action, or we recommend them to have a little bit higher action than electric guitars, and there's really a few reasons for that. For one, 
Acoustic guitars generally have a little bit more of a forceful approach. You can have some really, really hard strumming on acoustics. That's pretty common. On electrics, it's a little bit less rare. When you're hitting the strings that hard, they're going to resonate more widely and can interact with the frets more, so you need a little bit higher action to prevent having too much buzz. The other reason is that fret buzz really isn't quite as important when you're plugging into an amplifier. With an acoustic guitar, if you have buzz on your frets, you can hear it uh, anywhere that you play, no matter what, and it's really, really annoying. With electric guitars or with basses, a lot of times there's a little bit of buzz, uh, depending on how a player might have it set up, but you can't really hear that when it comes through the pickups quite as much, so you can definitely get away with a little bit lower action if you don't mind that little bit of buzz with the acoustic sound of the electric instrument. Now, one thing to keep in mind that a lot of players don't think about is that when you have a heavier gauge of string, whether you're talking about an acoustic guitar or an electric guitar, you can get away with having lower action than if you have a lighter gauge set of strings. This can be counterintuitive to a lot of folks because they think of a bigger string as taking up more space and getting closer to the fret, but that's not necessarily the case. The string is pulled up by the nut and the bridge at the other end, so even if that string gets thicker, it's not going any lower. Uh, it's just sitting higher up against whatever it's, you know, strung up on top of. As a result, uh, that doesn't really matter quite as much. What does matter is how widely the string vibrates. And the higher the tension a string is at, the tighter its vibrations are going to be at a given note. Uh, if you get, you know, a much looser string or a lower tension string, it's going to vibrate a lot more widely, and a higher tension string will be really, really uh, more subtle in terms of the vibration. Because of that, a higher tension set of strings, read a higher gauge set of strings, is going to be able to be put down at a lower action because it's not going to buzz against frets when it's closer to the fret, whereas a much lighter set of strings like 8s or 9s for electric or 10s or 11s for acoustics are going to vibrate more widely and make it more possible for you to get that fret buzz. So if you want to adjust the action on your guitar to suit your playing style a little bit better, what do you need to change and how should you do it? Well, there's a few different factors that dictate the overall string height on your guitar, and we'll talk about each of them here. So the first thing to look at, because it's the most easily reversible and easily tweakable, uh, is the height of your saddles. Now on an acoustic guitar, that could be the actual saddle that has to actually get longer, so you'd have to replace it with a new one or put a shim underneath it to get a little bit higher. On electric guitars, it's a lot more easy to adjust these, uh, you know, on Strat or Fender style guitar. That's these right here. There's a little Allen key that you can adjust in order to take these a little bit higher. On more tunematic style guitars, it's usually like there's two flathead um, screws on each side of the, the saddle that you can use to raise your bridge up, and that's going to affect your action and be really easy to go back. You can raise it up, lower it down, um, as much as you want and see what kind of makes the most sense. So for micro adjustments uh, or just kind of regular maintenance, that's definitely the easiest way to, to tweak your action or change a single individual string or what have you. Now another consideration that affects your guitar's action and a lot of players don't think about is the height of the nut itself. So on this Strat, it's gonna be right here. So a string on your guitar goes over the bridge at one end and the nut at the other. So if you raise either of those, the overall string between them is going to raise, but not all the way. It's going to kind of raise as it pivots uh, against these two different points. So if you want to get the string overall to be higher, you need to change both up just a little bit or both down. Um, nuts are not necessarily where I recommend starting with adjusting your guitar action because you really have to either shim or shave or get a, um, a larger or higher up nut in order to kind of change that or recut your nut slots. Um, it can be a little bit of a pain, but if you are adjusting the saddles or the bridge of your guitar to go higher and your action isn't raising up higher as much as you would like, um, or likewise going lower and you're getting some issues, you definitely should look at your nut and make sure that between your bridge and your nut, the string is sitting evenly and going over the frets the right way. If your bridge gets really high but your nut's lower, then you'll see you have really high action up higher on the fretboard uh, and lower action down at the bottom end of the fretboard, and that can be a little bit weird. So definitely consider that. Now the third thing on the guitar that you should keep in mind when we're talking about action is the truss rod. On a Gibson like this, that's what's sitting underneath this fancy little truss rod cover. Sometimes you just have a little uh, opening on fenders, sometimes it's down here um, at the bottom end of the neck, depending on the instrument. Now without going into too much depth on the history and purpose of truss rods, basically the truss rod is a steel bar that sits inside of your neck that you can use to adjust the angle of your neck. Guitar necks are made of wood outside of that steel bar, and when strings are pulling on them over time, without a truss rod, that can cause the neck to bow forward under that tension. So the truss rod is in there to strengthen the neck and give you something that you can tweak and adjust to ensure that your neck is staying straight when it, you know, has that string tension on it over years and years and climate changes and all that sort of crazy stuff. Now this is never the first place to look at when you have an action adjustment, but it is something to consider, especially if your guitar action is going too low with the seasons or too high with the seasons. 
Guitars are made of wood, and it changes when humidity and temperature changes outside. Your guitar is constantly adjusting and changing in small ways that you can't see. So if suddenly it's really, really cold outside and you have fret buzz, you might need to look at your truss rod and make an adjustment to keep everything straight. Again, this is not what you look at to adjust your guitar action, but if you're noticing some weird things with your action, again, like maybe you have really, really high action high up on the neck and lower action lower down on the neck, and you can't seem to, you know, everything seems right with the bridge and the nut, it's not that. It might be your truss rod causing some bow in your instrument and making it so that you can't get consistent string height over the entire fretboard. Now that's a lot of different moving parts. For some players out there, that's a pretty easy adjustment to do. Um, for other players, it might be something that makes a lot more sense to take it to a tech, but Keep in mind that these things are always changing. I hear from people all the time, right when like winter starts, or right when summer starts, like, hey, I put a new set of strings on my instrument, and now I have fret buzz. And usually what that is, is the climate changing and causing your guitar to adjust and change, you know, and you need a truss rod tweak in order to keep everything just right. Even I, when I take instruments from my office, which is super dry, because we make guitar strings there, to my house, it usually kind of messes with my setup and I have to make a couple of adjustments. But whether you're adjusting the bridge or the nut or the truss rod or whatever it is, Action is definitely something you should keep an eye on and something that you should work to dial in, whether that's on your own or with a tech. Getting your guitar to play the way that you want it and sound the way that you need it to for the style that you're playing is a super important thing. It's basically free if you do it on your own or it's a couple bucks from a tech. It's not usually a huge job, but it's definitely something you want to look at. You want your guitars to play the way that you want to. You want them to be able to you know, make the music that you want to make easily and in the most logical way, and getting your guitar action dialed in is a great way to do that.